Hey everyone, it's Tom here with Bunny Media. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Now, if you're thinking about selling online or you're already trying to sell online, there's probably a good chance you're thinking about Shopify. Shopify is really the go-to e-commerce solution for over a million businesses around the world. And between its sleek design, ease of use, and you know somewhat affordable pricing, it's not too surprising why Shopify is so popular. But while Shopify is popular, it's not necessarily the right choice for every type of e-commerce business. In fact, there are actually several Shopify alternatives that are usually better depending depending on your experience level, your budget, and the type of business you're running. So in this video, I'm covering four of my favorite Shopify alternatives that you can use to power your online store and get more sales. So if you're tired of Shopify or you just wanna try something different because you think it's a better fit for your business, this is absolutely the video for you. I'm covering the features, pros and cons, and the pricing of all of these Shopify alternatives to help you make the right decision. So yeah, without further ado, Let's get right to it. All right, so number one on the list of the best Shopify alternatives is Big Commerce, And this is undeniably one of the most similar platforms to Shopify. So if you're looking at something that's similar to Shopify, but maybe a little bit better, depending on your certain needs or goals or budget, BigCommerce might be the right solution for you. Now, BigCommerce is really similar to Shopify because once you set up your store with BigCommerce, it's quite simple to just, you know, set up your storefront, use a theme from BigCommerce. You don't have to know any coding or any technical knowledge or anything like that to get your store up and running. Like Shopify, all of the backend tech stuff is also handled for you. So you don't have to worry about hosting or really, you know, the backend stuff like your website crashing in the middle of the night because that's BigCommerce's job to handle, not yours. Now, one of the main things that we like about BigCommerce and why a lot of people choose BigCommerce over Shopify is that BigCommerce doesn't charge transaction fees. That's right, you don't pay any transaction fees, which as you'll know from Shopify, if you've ever used it, the transaction fees can be horrendous. Like you can pay between one to 2% unless you opt for Shopify payments, but Shopify payments isn't available in every country yet. So with Shopify, you kind of get in this situation where you're stuck using their payment processing system and not a third party processor you might want to use. Whereas BigCommerce, it doesn't matter. You don't pay transaction fees, you can use other third-party processors, you can connect PayPal or Stripe to your store for free, and you're not getting dinged with between one to 2% transaction fees, which is a big deal. Now, a lot of people I know who work in e-commerce from you know my time working in e-commerce also like big commerce over Shopify because with big commerce, you kind of get more functionality out of the box. Whereas with Shopify, you're gonna be going to their app store a lot, which don't get me wrong, the Shopify app store is great. You know, there's tens of thousands of apps. It's where developers spend a lot of their time, but these costs can kind of add up because a lot of Shopify apps charge monthly recurring fees Whereas with BigCommerce, you can find apps that are just a one-time fee, or again, you have that functionality that kind of comes out of the box. Now, this is especially true if you want to make changes to your actual shopping cart. So to add things like, you know, more advanced coupon codes or discounts for your best customers or BOGO deals or things like that. Shopify's native shopping cart is kind of lackluster in some regard, and that's where you're gonna be turning to those third-party apps. Whereas BigCommerce lets you pretty much customize your store right out of the box without really having to pay anything else. And so in terms of monthly pricing, BigCommerce actually starts at about $29.95 per month. Month, which is pretty much the same ballpark as Shopify. So while it looks like they're the same cost on paper, again, you're gonna need fewer apps and integrations, chances are with BigCommerce. So you're gonna be saving money in the long run that way. Finally, BigCommerce also has some kind of nifty integration features. And I like that their inventory can sync with platforms like Amazon or eBay. So if you sell on quite a few channels, and again, you don't want to use Shopify payments, you want your own payment processor system, BigCommerce has a lot going for it. I still think Shopify has better free themes and just better themes overall. And a lot of the BigCommerce themes kind of look the same. And you know, it's you might have to pay for a theme if you really want your store to look a bit different. But overall, I think BigCommerce is again, great if you want to avoid transaction fees, great if you're international, and you know, it has a lot more affordability long-term than Shopify for a lot of e-commerce owners. So what are the pros of BigCommerce? Well, the first one has to be ease of use. If you like Shopify or you, know, you think Shopify is user-friendly, BigCommerce is similar. So you don't have to be a techie to use this platform. The second one, again, you're avoiding those fees. So BigCommerce is more cost-effective in the long run. And the third pro of BigCommerce is again, you get those features out of the box so you don't have to buy as many apps. Now for the cons of BigCommerce, the main one is that you have fewer apps than Shopify because developers will develop stuff for Shopify and eventually port it over to BigCommerce but there's kind of that delay between that happening. And the second con of big commerce, again, like I mentioned, you have fewer free themes and kind of you know less variety overall, in my opinion. So you're probably gonna have to go with a premium theme. All right, and the second Shopify alternative on the list is kind of a newer e-commerce platform. And it's one we actually have a review video on this channel. And that platform is Selfie. Now I kind of think of Selfie like Shopify's younger brother. It's kind of like Shopify Lite because it's easy to use and you can get your store up and running. Well. Selfie lets you operate an e-commerce store in five minutes. I, again, made a review video about it, which you guys can watch. I'll link that in the card above. And yeah, Selfie is super easy to use. You don't need any technical experience. It uses a very sleek and easy to use drag and drop editor to let you design your storefront. And there are some you know, basic design tools you can use to kind of just 
make your store look how you want it to. Now, what's also cool about Selfie is it lets you sell different types of products. So you can sell physical products like you can with Shopify, but you can also sell digital products, print on demand products and subscriptions. So really Selfie is best if you sell digital products or subscriptions or anything like that. It's okay for print on demand, but it has fewer print on demand products than you know websites like Printful or Printify. So it's okay for that, but not the best. And really I wouldn't use it to sell physical products because Shopify just blows it out of the water on that front because they have way more shipping options, way more control over how you ship and deal with orders. But for digital products or subscriptions, Selfie is pretty good. What we really like about Selfie as well is that it has a free plan so you can launch your store without spending any money and it doesn't charge any transaction fees, which is also really, really cool. Now, if you want to upgrade your store and get a few more features and kind of, you know, add more products to your storefront, it's $29 per month. If you pay monthly, you get a discount if you pay annually, but you're probably gonna stick with monthly. So in terms of cost, it's basically the same as Shopify, but again, you're not stuck using Shopify payments and you're not paying transaction fees. So I definitely recommend watching our Selfie review if you're thinking about using this platform and there's gonna be a link to Selfie down below for you to try as well. But in terms of the pros of this e-commerce platform and Shopify alternative, ease of use is the main one. Like this thing is very easy to use. I set up a store in five minutes having never touched the thing before. So very, very simple to use. The fact that you don't pay transaction fees and that there's also a free plan makes this very beginner friendly. So if you're new to e-commerce, I definitely recommend giving Selfie some consideration. Now, in terms of the cons of Selfie, like I mentioned, I think the main one is it's not as robust for selling physical products. So if your store sells physical products, I stick with big commerce or Shopify and just, you know, use Selfie for digital products and subscriptions. And the second con of Selfie that I noticed when using the platform is it doesn't have a lot of native integrations, which is kind of unfortunate. So there's no app store. There's nothing like that. You can connect Zapier to your Selfie store and then connect to other apps. So this isn't such a big deal, but I would like the platform to expand its library of integrations moving forward. All right. And the third Shopify alternative on our list is WooCommerce. And if you're familiar with WordPress and you know how to use a WordPress website and you like the freedom and flexibility of being on the WordPress ecosystem, then WooCommerce is definitely the best Shopify alternative for you. So WooCommerce is basically an open source plugin that's built for WordPress. And since WordPress is also open source, there's really a lot of flexibility and control you get over your storefront when you use WooCommerce instead of sticking with a platform like Shopify. So what's pretty cool about WooCommerce is it's actually free. It's just a plugin, it's open source like I mentioned. So there's no like monthly fees dinging you all the time like Shopify. Now, to be fair, when you are setting up your WordPress site, you're gonna buy hosting with a provider like Bluehost or SiteGround. You're gonna buy your domain name. You might buy a premium theme. So it's not completely free in the sense like you start a free Selfy store, for example, and you're not paying anything. So keep that in mind. But in terms of monthly cost, you're not getting dinged by WooCommerce subscription fees. Now, because WooCommerce is on WordPress, there is a little bit more of a learning curve and you have to kind of get the technical aspects of your site down. But this honestly sounds a lot more intimidating than it is in reality. And hosts these days have one-click WordPress installs. There's so many guides on how to set up a WordPress website, how to design your site, how to you know get the right plugins and speed up your site and just manage all of the technical aspects. So it's really a good exercise in my opinion and not something that should scare you. And once you install WooCommerce to your site, you pretty much just activate a theme just like Shopify and you start designing your site and you're pretty much off to the races. And this is where WooCommerce really differs from Shopify. This is your corner of the internet. This is your store. You have a self-hosted website. It's your domain name. You're running it on WordPress. You're not in that same cage like with BigCommerce or Shopify or Selfy where if that company changes the rules, you're kind of at the mercy of those rule changes. You can also connect third-party payment processing systems like PayPal or Stripe to your WooCommerce store. And so again, you're not paying transaction fees. Those payment processors will charge you a little bit, but you're not getting dinged one or 2%, like if you don't use Shopify payments. Now WooCommerce does have its own WooCommerce payment solution that charges you different you know, fees depending on the kinds of transactions you accept and what countries you're in. So there is that option, but I would avoid it and I just stick with Stripe and PayPal if you want to keep things more affordable. And one final thing I really want to mention about why WooCommerce might be better than Shopify for your business is that because WooCommerce is on WordPress, it is so much better for blogging. WordPress is really built with a lot of SEO and blogging functionality in mind between, you know, the publishing editor, how you get plugins that speed up your site or let you optimize your content in certain ways. It's just way better for blogging than Shopify where your blog can kind of feel like an afterthought. So if you want to write articles for your blog and for your business and to get organic traffic to your site that you convert into customers, and this is a big part of your content strategy, WooCommerce is way better than Shopify. There's no question about it. Way better for blogging and there's a lot more control and flexibility you have over how you run your business. Of course, like I mentioned, all of this comes with a little trade-off because you have to manage your tech and your security and your site speed and kind of learn the ropes that way. But I think that is a great exercise. And I think at some point in time, most people are gonna try building a WordPress website. So 
There's never a better time to start than now. So that's why I think WooCommerce is definitely one of the best Shopify alternatives around. And so in terms of the pros you get with WooCommerce, again, it's completely free out of the box. There's also a massive community of developers. So WordPress is open source. It's improving all the time. There's new plugins and integrations all the time. So it's very, very cool that way. And then again, that third pro is just you have complete control. This is your store. It's not Shopify's store. You're the boss. You decide what happens. And I think that is a pretty empowering feeling overall. And the cons, of course, there's more technical aspects, a steeper learning curve. So if you're brand new to e-commerce and all of this scares you and you don't have a lot of time, maybe stick with Cellfire, maybe give BigCommerce a try. But if you're ready to take on that a bit more of a challenge and to really own your own store, I'd go with WooCommerce. All right, and the fourth and last Shopify alternative in this video I wanted to talk about is Etsy. And I know that this is a weird one to include in this video. And I've watched a lot of videos on Shopify alternatives. I've read guides on them and no one talks about Etsy because it's a marketplace. It's not a standalone e-commerce platform. And so the argument is this is kind of apples to oranges. But I know quite a few e-commerce owners who sell on Shopify and Etsy. And I know a lot of e-commerce owners who have much more success on Etsy. And in my opinion, there are some clear cut scenarios where Etsy makes way more sense than Shopify. I mean, Etsy is one of the go-to destinations for buying anything handmade or vintage. So if you sell stuff like artwork or apparel, you know, craft supplies, jewelry, home goods, anything like that, there's probably already an argument to start exploring Etsy rather than selling on Shopify. But product selection aside, the main reason you would sell on Etsy rather than Shopify is that Etsy is a marketplace, like I mentioned, and it has tens of millions of monthly active buyers. So when you launch a store with Shopify, you're kind of in a, a little bubble of your own and you have to drive traffic back to your store. No one's gonna go to shopify.com and then go to this marketplace and boom, find your store because they were searching for a present for someone and you now have a free customer. But with Etsy, you can tag your products with different you know, descriptive tags. You can write SEO rich titles. You can write robust product descriptions. And over time, your listings can actually rank on Etsy's marketplace, getting you organic traffic to your store and getting you free sales. This is really the main advantage of selling on a marketplace over selling on Shopify. And yes, it is competitive. You're not just gonna make a listing on Etsy and rank tomorrow, but there are sellers who get a lot of money from organic sales on Etsy. And Etsy also has its own ad platform that lets you promote your listings on its marketplace. So there's quite a few ways to drive traffic to your storefront. Now, really the main downside of Etsy over Shopify is that it's not really your own store. You're a marketplace vendor. You're not you know, running your own independent e-commerce store. And so Etsy shops kind of all look the same. You have less design control, less flexibility over how you manage your business. There is Etsy Plus, which costs $10 per month, and that gives you more design options and a bit more control over your business, but it's still not even close to what you'll get with something like Shopify, BigCommerce, or WooCommerce. Etsy is also a lot more expensive than Shopify, which is kind of hard to do because Shopify is expensive. So there's a, a 20 cents listing fee for every item you list on your store and listings expire every four months. This might not sound like a lot, but if you have a lot of SKUs in your store and you sell a lot of product types, that's actually gonna add up over time. There's also a 5% transaction fee, which is enormous. You can get that down to about three to 4% if you opt into Etsy payments. And then there's also usually like a 20 cents transaction or processing fee kind of thrown onto that. So Etsy is quite expensive. Now on the bright side, because it's handmade and vintage stuff, usually your product prices are higher. So maybe there's enough margin to kind of accommodate for this transaction fee, but that is another massive downside of Etsy. It is quite expensive. So in exchange for selling on this marketplace with all of these active buyers, you're kind of paying to play. But ultimately, if you have no idea how to drive traffic to your online store and you sell vintage and handmade goods, I think there's a pretty compelling argument to just open an Etsy shop first see how it does, and you can always expand to Shopify or other Shopify alternatives in the future. So the pros of Etsy, you have millions of active buyers. It's also very, very easy to set up your shop and you can get free organic traffic, which is basically free sales and free money. So I think Etsy has a lot of potential that way. Now in terms of the cons, you have way less control over design or how you manage your business. And of course there are those hefty transaction fees like I mentioned. Anyways, guys, that does it for our list of the best Shopify alternatives. I hope one of the alternatives I covered in this video helps you make the right decision for your business and find the e-commerce platform that works best for you. Now, I know I left out some other popular candidates like Squarespace or Wix, and honestly, I did that because I think those platforms are okay if you sell very basic things, like maybe you sell one product and that's all you do, or you have a very, very simple store. But in my opinion, I like Shopify over Wix or Squarespace. I used to work on a lot of Shopify stores for my day job. I really do like Shopify. I think it makes a lot of sense for beginner e-commerce stores and even, you know, enterprise level e-commerce stores, depending on their goals. But I really didn't want to, you know, touch Wix or Squarespace for this video. So I hope you guys will forgive that. Uh, but yeah, I do think Shopify is generally better than Wix or Squarespace. Just my opinion, throwing it out there. But that is why they didn't make the cut 
for this video. Really, I just wanted this video to shed some light on some of the best Shopify alternatives you should probably consider if you run different kinds of e-commerce businesses. In my opinion, Big Commerce is the best Shopify alternative in terms of ease of use and affordability. Sellfy is best if you wanna set up your store super quickly and sell digital products or subscriptions. WooCommerce is best if you're a bit techie and you don't mind a tech challenge, you want to cut costs and you want complete control over your e-commerce business. And finally, I think Etsy is best if you sell vintage or handmade products and your margins will allow for a little bit of a higher transaction fee. That does it for this one, guys. If you're gonna pick a Shopify alternative or you have experiences selling on any of the platforms I mentioned, let us know down in the comments. We'd love to hear about other people's experience with e-commerce. This has been Tom Blake with Bunny Media. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Have an awesome day and we'll catch you guys in the next one.